four literal years, we on this show have banged on and on about the need for a Barry Hearn type supremo at the helm of British Speedway. And now, finally, uh, in the Premier League at least, we have it. And doesn't it show? Now, he took a year to look, analyse and digest what was needed, and at last it feels like decisions are being made for the good of British Speedway and not for individual teams. We have sponsorship for the league, lots of sponsorship, and uniformity of presentation. And we have a new professionalism in the sport. It feels, it feels like a breath of fresh air. Something that Ty Woffington has been calling for a while now, even if he couldn't quite match the professionalism himself recently. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be more about that later. That aside, I have to say it's about time. So far, so good. So far, so good for Phil Morris. I may not agree with all his decisions going forward. That's to be expected. But at least I will know that these decisions will be, to use an acnid phrase, in the best interests of Speedway. So welcome to the 31st Speedway Tavern of the Year, sponsored by So-Called Studios, a music production suite and venue based in Acox Green. Check them out at www.socalledstudios.co.uk. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Right, where do we start? The beginning. You probably don't want to start with last night, do you? Uh, probably not. We'll, we'll, we, I'm sure we'll come to that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of going, lot going on in the uh, Speedway world, particularly it's, it, we're going to be very Premiership-centred, I think, today because of there's more been happening in there. But yep. So, first of all, what, did we, what have we all made of the uh, new professionalism, the new media day and all the things that have been happening? Yeah, well, I've only, I only saw bits of the media day, but I thought, um, I thought it looked good. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I mean, the vast majority of the riders there, of course, not all of them uh, were able to... Were able to be there for certain for obviously or circumstances and things like that, um, but no, that was that was very good. Um, obviously, I think the one downside, as you've alluded to, was uh, Toy's uh, rather potty mouth, which I don't know whether Phil Morris will be having a word with him about that because um, I suppose I suppose in a sense it comes naturally to him, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's yeah. not really the sort of thing that you want to be uh, talking to having uh, if you're trying to make the sport look a bit more uh, no. professional. No, we say. but other than that, that was pretty good. Um, there's been some very close matches in the in the league so far as well. There's not really been any big thumpings yet. Ipswich, Ipswich against Bellevue is probably the the only one so far that's been mm. comprehensive. Um, but yeah, I think the early the early signs are, are very encouraging. I think for certainly for the top league, and I think mm. it's I think it shows at the moment the top league is the place to be. I, mean, I think so, league. just for the first time for a while. To be fair, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I like the fact that there seems to be a uniformity of presentation. Mm -hmm. um, they seem, we seem to be getting through matches very quickly. Yes, um, I mean, which is something we've always done at Birmingham. To be fair, but it it just feels as if there's bang, 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 you know, and so there's not so, so much empty space for people to fill. Yeah, I think I think really that's that's Phil Morris's experience of working in the Grand Prix because the mm. Grand Prix has always been the same. You know, four races, bang, 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 then a grow track grade then the next four races you know not not standing around especially, especially at this time of the year on a freezing cold night when you're standing around just watching the tractors go around or listening to somebody babbling away on the microphone yeah. on the centre green sorry uh, really... sorry guest <laughs> I didn't say guest his name no. <laughs> so so yeah I mean it, it just feels it's that word more professional more professional so have we got any uh, people on the <sighs> Shout box tonight. Let's say hi to everybody. Um, hello, Elliot. Hello, Rich. Uh, hello, John. Duncan's there. Uh, Andrew's there. Um, and a few others. Okay. Dylan, Dylan's there as well. Yep, yep. Okay. Pete, Pete as Pete well. Yep. Um, I actually have to um, have a give a, a big apology out to the guys at um, Birmingham Speedway. As many of you will know, uh, Birmingham Speedway's got a really, really good set of volunteer workers that put all the tyres down, do all the work on Sunday, do a lot of stuff. And I normally help them out after a match, um, taking the sheets off and taking the tyres off. Didn't do that last night. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I got a puncture on my motorbike. So I was, I was, yeah, transportless and I had a buzz to catch. So I do apologise. Uh, I do feel bad a little bit. Mm. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Uh, okay, so we've got a few. Let's, let's uh, go through. 
Gotcha yeah, some. Birmingham are good for the wooden spoon, apparently, says Rich Thomas. Nice. I hope he's wrong. Certainly on last night's evidence, they might be. Oh, <laughs> God, I hope he's wrong. I mean, look, it's been looking positive the past few, the few, first few meetings, I think we can say we outperformed what people expected of us. Yeah. Um, I've got to say thank God for Scott Nichols. I mean, what? How old is he? 45? 46, 46, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh he should be, you know, in his pipe and slippers, shouldn't he? I don't know. But it's no need for him to retire if he's riding like that. No, absolutely so. not. Absolutely not. Um, the evening chaps feels like a long time, says uh, Dylan's buddy Hodgins. It hasn't been, yes. It has been, it has been. Oh, but yeah. uh, can we avoid the wooden spoon? I mean, I'm biased. You t- is it? I mean, you are a little bit yourself now, probably. <laughs> it's sort oh, of your I'm team sitting, at the moment. Sitting on the, the sidelines this year. Yeah. Um... You can't say that. It's your team at the moment. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I think, well, let, let's let's be fair. I mean, the move to the top flight was enforced, really, with the loss of the mm-hmm. the Wednesday nights. Um, it, it's very difficult to see the, the Birmingham charging for the playoffs, I think, with the, with the current lineup, They've got to be competitive at home because last last season really was was pathetic. Mm. And, you know, You've got to say that it hasn't been pathetic. It hasn't been. Yeah, the, one, the one <clears throat> thing I would say about last night's meeting is that they, they, they didn't capitulate, which I think last season probably would have been would the have case. Been, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not the target. The target this season for Birmingham isn't going to be to get into the playoffs or win the league, but they've got to be competitive. I mean, mm. really, they've just got to stabilise the club. You know, moving into the top flight is, I think, is the right thing to mm. do. I said that last season. I thought it was the the right step. And the crowds have been really good. Yeah, I think the crowd, certainly the crowd against Sheffield was was a, mm. probably the biggest crowd I've seen there for about eleven years. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was uh, obviously Sheffield. Obviously, brought a lot and made a noise, as I thought they, uh, <laughs> as I, I knew they would do from yeah. from experience of uh, standing in front of the Monmouth for all those years. But uh, um, you've got to say at the moment, Birmingham probably do look to be the favourites to finish in the. In the bottom spot, I just think they're going to be out, outgunned in in the big heats. That's the pro- that's, that's that gonna, appears that's to be, be the, the problem. The big problem. There's a lot of Scott. There's got, there's a lot of um, emphasis going to be on Pavlitsky when he's fit, mm. and um, Milic. Milic actually rode very well, I thought, against uh, Sheffield. He did, um, but last night was a was a bit of a disaster. Of mm. course, switching your fuel, not forgetting to turn your fuel on is. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a bit unprofessional, isn't it? Really, that's always that's a bit of a schoolboy error, I think, for a for a rider. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be a tough season for Birmingham, but I think they need certainly need to be competitive at home, and if they can pick up anything on the road, that's that's a bonus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we came cl- we've come close. Twice yeah, now. certainly it was a very close. very encouraging performance at um, at Ipswich, Ipswich last week. Although I think that you know, obviously Ipswich had a few rides that were off form. Mm-hmm. Um, Emil Sofford again didn't have a great line last night again he was sort of not quite the, the Emil that we saw no, last, last season year. Yeah, probably doesn't like the cold um, <laughs> Duncan Pemberton is Scott Nichols Oxford Kevlar's going to get worn out guesting for other teams uh, possibly not because he's got his um, TV commitments uh, of course so. yeah that rules I think that rules out <clears> any <throat> possibility of him racing in the top league and not mm. just not just for Birmingham I think um I think if there was a possibility of him, of him being in the top league, I think there'd be quite a few clubs that would be would have been knocking on his door. Absolutely. But uh, um, obviously, that, that's, particularly as he's now down at reserve. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> no, yeah. But I mean, obviously, he see. I mean, obviously, he's still got as we saw last night. He's still got you know lots of points mm. in him as a rider. But he's obviously now looking towards the next the next stage of his of his life, isn't he? So. Yeah. Which, you know. uh, Elliot Hunt. It was certainly a cold one at Ipswich on Thursday. The lads did well to keep. In it, leading for the first half before only losing about eight points. My first visit there. I mean, actually, that sort of says it all. I mean, we did le- let we've let Leeds slip um, at Oxford. We, oh no, well, Oxford was different. We let Leeds slip at, uh, against Sheffield. We let Leeds slip against Ipswich, and it's that points to that heat leader strength that you was talking about. Watching the Sheffield meeting, you always felt that Sheffield were yeah. going to nick it at the end. Because of the the strength that they had at the at the top end of the team, mm-hmm. um, obviously tired. Uh, didn't have a great first ride, but after that was you know was un- was pretty much untouchable, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and but, that that that's your that's your problem in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. But then again, he's probably going to be untouchable against most. You riders. you you would think so. Yeah, yeah. you would think so. To be, to be fair, this year, 
good evening, guys. Up the beast, says Nick Green. There's been a few positive um, things happening around the Coventry situation, haven't there? As far as uh, there's a long way to go on that mm, one yet. I think, um, but they haven't uh, appealed the decision. They haven't appealed it, but that doesn't mean they're not going to come back with a completely mm. different um, application. I don't right. think we've heard the the last of that one yet. As of I've said many times, I think stopping them from building on it is probably going to be the easy bit. It's getting the stadium back out of their hands is going to be the is going to be the tough. Somebody said we'll be fine without Milik, but he's actually not been. I mean, he had a bad night last night, but uh, and now he had a bad night at Oxford. Yeah, had he, had he not had a bad night at Oxford, off Birmingham might will have won that match. Yes. to be fair, and which was got, amazing when you consider the start that was made. And if you, you got to say if um, Leon Flint didn't br- uh, break two chains and get a puncture at Ipswich. Could have won that one yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, Dylan Spuddy Hodgetts. Brum will be fine. Last night was tough, but we'll bounce back. Pietro back at number one. Thursday will take some pressure off Vaclav. I mean, we need to. We do need to, to say that Vaclav's riding at number one. Yeah, he's not the number and one. And he's not number one. Riding at number five will be slightly... He'll get some slightly easier yeah. uh, races. I'd say, that, say the same, really, for Steve Worrell, because Steve Worrell rode as a heat leader last night, and Steve, he's not a heat leader. No, no. Yeah, so... Uh, Brian Reese and Scott Nichols always keeps himself in good shape. I also, I'd also like to hear about um, people's other matches, you know, that, that they've been to, not just last night's match. Uh, uh, Dylan Spuddy Hodgett says, I hope I'm in as good shape as Scotty when I'm 45. I don't think you're in as good shape as him now, mate. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, too many inconsistent riders for Brum, says Simon Corbett. Yeah, there's some truth in there. Hopefully they can sort. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, Victor will be fine too when he gets some gating gloves. I don't think Victor's not. I'll tell far you something. Off. When he's when he gates, mm. he's blooming quick, isn't he? He is quick. He's, yeah. He's just. Uh, um, I thought that was you know that probably turned the meeting. Really, he was eight ten last night when he came off. Um, there was I mean there was no contact between him and uh, there wasn't any contact. Chris um, yeah. I mean, that was the thing, really. You, you know, you know, you're in trouble when Chris Harris is making starts because the first two races he won from the gas. Yes, you're thinking, this is going to be a bit of a. This is going to be a tough one. So, yeah. do we think Brennan could be number five? Maybe, maybe talk. Maybe the end, so when the new averages come out. He's had a good start. I mean, he was yeah. one of the few that uh, really did come out with a lot of credit. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, credit last night. So, got a lot of time for Tom. But, yeah. Okay. I so, think he needed the move to be fair because I thought he was slightly below par for, for Bellevue last season. Um, mm. So I think, you know, and he's, it's a track that he's always done well at whenever he's guested for the Brummies. So the yeah. move might do him good. I mean, the one thing I will say about is that we do seem to have a good team spirit in there, even though we've not won a match yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, they, have, they certainly haven't been outclassed. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say that they were outclassed last night. I mean, I think the big thing really last night was the gating. The gating was horrific. It um, was. And unfortunately, we got a bit of a gaiters track at the moment because everything's had to be packed down because of the weather. Yeah, that's right. Uh, which is, you know, but hopefully that will be sorted out for the next match that I won't be, be there for. But <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> So if, I, if we win the next match and I'm not there, I probably won't go to another one. Uh, can we talk about some of the refing decisions so far this season? OK. In particular, the one in Heat 2 last week at Leicester when Joe T was excluded for laying down to avoid Drew, one of the worst calls I've seen for years. There is I've, an investigation. There is an meeting. investigation about it, yeah. Oh, so, uh, so explain that Explain that to me. Um, so Joe Thompson, he, um, he, he looked... From, I mean, I didn't see it, so, but what, what I've been told is he, he laid down his bike to avoid uh, Drew, who's sort of careering across, and, but then he didn't, Drew didn't fall off, as I understand it, and Joe Thomas, Joe Thompson was excluded, but is, have I got that right? Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. There's, there's, there were other decisions. Uh, and right? there was a lot of people there that said that he should not, that should not yeah. have been excluded because he did the right thing, he avoided, to, to avoid an accident. Oh, okay. But the, the only thing I would say about that is, I mean, who'd be a referee? Because the referee has got to exclude somebody. That's the rules. Yeah, he's got to. You know, you've, got, you've got to have uh, what was it? The c- cause of the accident, uh, and he sort of he come off by himself. In effect, yeah. he, laid, he purposely came off by himself. Yeah, well, there were, there were other ones. I don't. There? I don't think the referee's got. To, he's got to make a choice then. So who would you? Would, who would you exclude? Say, so is there a, a case for a change in? in um, 
the rules that that, that specifically states if a rider lays uh, uh, the bike down to avoid injury or whatever or possible injury that then he's not excluded do you think that that, that maybe that's something that needs to be changed well ultimately who stopped the race the rider that came down mm. so i suppose going by that going by that look, uh, regulation that it is the right decision yeah um it's the only decision really yeah. that he can yeah. make on on with the way the rules are but th- there were some other well uh, leaving decisions. the leave certainly you know, not having not not seeing that the um, the pole to hold the starting mm. case was left on the truck. I mean, that's which they now know, which has now been stopped. Yeah, They're not, not having that pole anymore. I can't believe it's taken that long to stop mm. that. Because I mean, I remember about twenty years ago that happened uh, in Poland when um, I think it was left on a track in the Polish league meeting, mm. and Yara Campbell caught it with his bike, and Chris Louis was just oh, behind oh, him, and yeah, he was knocked, talking he knocked him it. unconscious. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he, he pretty much finished his career off. Mm. So I mean, that's. That's that's totally out of order to, to hear that on. That's that's on that's on not just on the referee. That's also on the starting marshal and, and the track staff. If they can't see that that's been left on the track, well, it, it's 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 as heinous a crime as forgetting to turn your probably petrol, you yeah. get your fuel on, isn't it? Um, it's that sort of a you know it, sh- it, sh- it should be an automatic thing. You shouldn't even have to think about yeah, it. But. Absolutely. Fred Graham says, great to see you guys back on air. Looking forward to watching James Pearson ride racing for the 2023 Champions Glasgow Tigers Speedway in 24 when, when we get started. However, when that will be, as weather's not great up here for the next two weeks. It's not great anywhere, is it, at it the moment? It's not great outside here at the moment, is it? Sir? I actually <laughs> did a bit of research, and obviously this is in the Birmingham area. Um, we have not had one single day... That's not had rain of some sort since, well, this year. There has not been one single day that has not had some rain in it. So, I mean, that's just... Ford everywhere we're supposed to be getting hot because of global warming. So. Well, we're having oh. boiling water, baby. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. <Blooming> global warming. <laughs> I went to Bellevue, Sheffield yesterday. This is Elliot Hunt. As, well, close meeting at lunchtime. Done in... It was a close meeting at lunchtime. Done in 75 minutes. Done in 75 minutes due to the incoming rain. Connor Mountain and Connor Bailey kept, got 12 points between them, comparing to the Sheffield Reserves only getting two points. Ty Waffenden was on fire. Hope this form goes into the Grand Prix series. Sheffield kept themselves in it for the second leg on Thursday. Perhaps that's a good opportunity for us to talk about the upcoming Grand Prix season. Mm-hmm. Can we see anybody challenging... Mr. Schmarslick. Well, I think the, the one probably first in, in line is going to be Freddie Lindgren. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, had a terrific season uh, last year. Um, he's really the only one I, th- I think that is capable over a f- full period of the season stopping stopping Bartos getting under the champ getting under the championship because he just seems to be dialed in so much into these into these GPs at mm. the moment. Um, I mean, he probably in a lot of the JPs last season, he maybe wasn't at his best, but he was grinding out wins. Mm. And if he's well, certainly he, the beginning of the season, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was poor at Car- he was poor at Cardiff. <clears> and he, you know, because he, he won his semi final, and everybody's thinking uh, he's going to do this again. And of course, he didn't. So, um, but no, I, I, I think um, I think it'd be very, very it'd be a brave man to bet against him winning it again mm. to get in the to get in the third championship in a row, which should obviously equal. I've a major record because he's the only one to do it three times. Yeah, that, row, that's, so. that's supposed to be the the big thing, isn't it? That yeah. getting three on the row is, is yeah. supposed to be very, very. Well, obviously, it's very difficult. Where do you see Ty this year? Because I mean, he has started. He started well. I think it need. I think he needed to sort of get some more racing under his belt, and mm. I think coming back to coming back to Britain is obviously a big part of that. Um, I think he's basing himself back in this country now because obviously he had been based over in Poland, um, where as you know, Spado is obviously you know he's probably more got more of a Attention from the media in Poland yeah. that he has in uh, in Britain, so he can maybe be, 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 be a bit more um, sort of under the radar a little bit, living back in this country. And, and certainly, he's had a very good start to the season in a lot of the matches that he's ridden so far. I mean, he, he was on fire at Birmingham for sure. <coughs> yeah. Although Leon Flint did beat him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. He did. Yeah. Just, just thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> Uh, Elliot Hunt, Joe Thompson laid down his bike as Drew had nowhere to go, so he should have been left in the race and got a point. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't disagree with that, but mm-hmm. I, from a referee's point of view, I don't think he's. He, I think he has 
in that situation, he has to well, is, exclude is it, somebody. Is it the referee or is it the rule? Well, the well exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is definitely oh. the rule. In that, the, so it's it's too it's too strict. It's there's not enough leeway in it. There needs to be some give. It's, yeah, that's one of the rules that maybe they do need to do what they normally do with with speedway and take thirty three words to say one thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, Dave Twine, I think health and safety should be first and foremost, not the ref. Most refs have not ridden a bike, but the ref's got to go by the rule book. That's literally what that's literally his job mm-hmm. or her job. Yeah. Um, Rich Thomas says, was it Christine Turnbull or Dave Robinson? It was Dave Watts, actually, it was the referee. <laughs> One of the most experienced ones as well. So Ben Clifton wants to know what he's missed. Not a lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pete Clark, where would British Speedway be without a traffic cone on the start line? <laughs> traffic cone with a with a broom with, sticker, with a broom sticking stuck out in the it, middle. Yeah. Of it, yeah. Uh, okay, Bartek wasn't overly impressive in Poland individual meeting yesterday. I presume that's the golden helmet. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know who won that. Uh, how did Pavlicki do in that? Um, I would like to know. I'm not sure. And Janowski as well. <clears throat> it was uh, referee at, non- at Leicester on the 21st of March was Dave Waters. There you go. Mm-hmm. I think Bartek very often starts slow. Yeah, he doesn't want to show his hand too mm. early, does he, really? Um, I mean, he is a class act. There's no getting away from it. Well, four world championship stars you all mm. need, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of them around the roads at Brum, never run out of them at Perry Bar, ain't that the truth? Certainly he's around Tars, don't you? Yeah. Uh. Um, Pieter scored seven and looked solid. Yeah, okay. I think there's gonna be there's obviously there's gonna be pressure on him because he's gonna be expected mm. to fill the number one spot very, very quickly. I'm just glad to see him t- in turning up and I mean I gotta talk about all the naysayers that are going, oh, he's, he, he, it's just Lawrence Rogers signing somebody that's not going to come and blah mm-hmm. blah all of this sort of stuff. It, absolutely ridiculous, by the way. Kubera mm-hmm. uh, won yesterday, OK. Um, yeah, good role I mean, Dominic Kubera. At the press and practice when he didn't turn up because he had a last-minute doctor's appointment, and you're going to take it, aren't you? When oh, you, of course, you yeah. Know, you're going to take it. Um some of the things said, oh, he was never going to turn up. You know, it, it's just a sham, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've got to tell you, his um, Kevlar's were there hanging up in the pits mm-hmm. for him, so we was expecting him to turn up. It was, it was a last minute. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pieter looks right at home in those Brummy Kevlar's too. Is there a picture of that? Oh. Or, are you, or or is this uh, more of the same? Okay. Oh, we caught up. Okay, good, go. good. Yeah. There's no meetings tonight. I, I, no, not, is there, cause, not tonight, no. Yeah, because it wouldn't be with this rain anyway, would there? No. We've got a few meetings, obviously, in the next week or so. So. Okay, so I think what we should do now is, because what we haven't done, which we normally do, and I'm quite pleased that we haven't done that this year, we haven't done our predictions, Um I don't think we're going to do that, thanks. Because <laughs> I'm going to go for Birmingham to be in the top four, and I don't want to look like an idiot. So, um, well, we'll have a look. So certainly, have a look through the. Well, let's have a look through through all the teams in the Premiership. We'll start off with and see how you know. Uh, we'll just, give a little bit before, of how we think they're doing. Before you do that, are we going to do the prediction league this season? Of course, we're going yeah, to do the well, prediction yeah. league okay. this season, okay. and we're just going to leave lots of work for you over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but more of that later. I uh, see Mr. Harris hasn't learned to spell his name properly. Yeah, it's Mikhail Harris. It is on the, uh, on, the on the screen. Is, he? is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, it's only been there for three years. Yeah. I noticed it a couple of times. I just wonder whether you, whether you, you were going to notice it. So. I hadn't noticed, you noticed it. it. No. Yeah, I, don't, I, thought he, I, don't I thought he was that. Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mikhail. <laughs> Uh, good to finally put a face to the name in person last week too. I, uh, this is probably the guy I was telling you about. I said I recognise your voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My, so that's the one. That's the one listener. Okay. So shall we go through? Yeah. Bellevue. Yeah. You have got Bellevue. You have got Brady Kurtz, Dan Bewley, Jamin Lidsey, Ben Cook, Norrie Bladorn, Connor Mountain, and Connor Bailey. 
So how do we think they've started? Well, they've only had a couple of matches, haven't they? They got mm. they got pretty they got beaten, obviously at um, Ipswich. Yeah, and of course they won on in the cup in the cup against uh, Sheffield, one by six. I'm not convinced that's going to be enough. No. Um, my verdict on them is, I'll, you don't rule them out, but I think they look I think they look a bit long in the tail. Right. I think they'll be okay at home, but I'm not convinced that they'll be winning. Uh, when you're getting enough points on on the road, mm. um, they're certainly going to need Lidsey and um, Cook to build on 2023, which was very successful for them. Um, obviously, Norwich Bladorn's in the side as well, but he's they've had a, he's been a bit of a trump card for Bellevue because he's been a reserve for the last couple of years. Not going to be the case this mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think they look a bit vulnerable, Bellevue. To be honest, okay, maybe that's who we should be targeting to win against then. <laughs> Next up is. Well, if we're going by alphabetical order, we'll obviously go for uh, Birmingham. Go yeah, on then. So, let's just. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've probably spoke a lot too much about them, but let's. Yeah. Okay. So you've got Piotr Pavlitsky, Vaclav Milik, Steve Worrell, Victor, Victor Lampard, uh, Tom Brennan, Zach Cook, and Leon Flint. On the face of it, best reserves in in the league, possibly. That's. I think that's going to be the key thing. I think. Mm. All season, really, Birmingham are going to have strength in, in the reserve. And obviously, mm-hmm. Zach and, and Leon obviously know each other anyway mm-hmm. from, from mm-hmm. being the reserves at Wolves last season. So, um, I think it's going to help Milic not being in the first race. I think it is, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah definitely. Yeah, Pavlic, obviously, having him back at number five. It's tough, tough going out in the first eight, really. So much hinges on what sort of form Pavlicki brings... Well, if it's the Pavlitsky that we had ten years ago, mm. I mean, he he was some some of the moves he pulled off with us was were, were brilliant. It was the, the problem was getting him there. Mm. Unfortunately, I think a lot of it was down to his Polish club, and that's that's always going to be a bit of a risk when you sign any part of the races yeah. in uh, in Poland. On on his day, um, Pavlitsky is brilliant, but he he just seems to have lost his way a little bit in the last few years. So maybe the coming back to Britain will help him. That's what he's he stated that that's why yeah. he's doing it. So. Everybody has said some really bad things about Birmingham. Everybody's taken pot shots at them. I don't think they're in anywhere near as bad as people have been no, saying. No, I, I, I certainly don't think it's going to be one of these teams that's going to lose every single mm. week. I mean, obviously that was that was pretty much the case last season. Yes, but I, I, I get the impression in the early few weeks there's a bit more there's a bit more together. There's a bit more heart in the mm. in this in this, the, this Birmingham team than there was last season. I think last season once they went behind, I think that was it. They just capitulated. Yeah, absolutely. Too many occasions. I think I don't think Sam and Milenko is going to let let that happen anyway. Uh, and and I've I've been quietly impressed by oh, Sam, yeah. by Sam this year. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that's good. Uh, oh, you've lost a few. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Tell me about yeah. Tommy, sorry, uh, That'll do. Okay. If Ipswich keep Dan <coughs> Thompson in in this form, that could breeze the league. His head and shoulders the best RS this season. Yeah, so we'll come on to Ipswich at some yeah. point in the. And uh, Duncan Pemberton said we should put Birmingham's wooden spoon up. They are going to get us the prize for prediction league winner. <laughs> Where is that? Is him predicting that he's going to be finished bottom? Is that of the last league? season's wooden spoon yeah. or, the, or a... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and um, yeah, you can take it down a little bit more. Yeah, because he says um, Rich Thomas says they're not that vulnerable. Presumably talking about Bellevue, so. Uh, I think a way they might be. Okay. Might. So. And Spuddy's going to say Pieta will end the season on an average over nine. That would be good. I'd take That'd that. That'd be what Birmingham need. Yeah, I'd take so. that. Okay, so next. Yes, so I think Milik did forget to turn his fuel on last night. Pretty sure that's what yeah, happened. That, that is so. I, was, yeah. I thought that at the time. That that's probably what happened. But... Um, yeah, it's a yeah. bit of a schoolboy error, as they say, that one. So. I'm sure everybody's done it. <laughs> OK, let's move on to Ipswich then. So we've got Emil Saifutinov, uh, Jason Doyle, Danny King, uh, Keenan Rue, Adam Ellis, Jordan Jenkins and Dan Thompson. I don't just don't see any weakness in that team. I think... What have I put here? Um, they haven't made wholesale changes for a no. start. You know, they, they mm-hmm. could have done that after missing out last season. Um I think the the key man for them is going to be Adam Ellis because he had an awful season mm. last year. Of course. He started Cul- off culminate. really well, hasn't he? Cul- yeah, culminating mm. obviously in losing his place at, um, at Sheffield. 
Um, so they've, they've made tweaks. I think they look stronger than they did last season. I think last season they were probably a bit too dependent on um, Sofford and, and and Doyle. You know, I mean, obviously I know Emil's had you know a couple of if he stop if he matches so far this season, but I think he'll soon get himself settled in. I mean, he was a breath of fresh air last year in in the league, mm. not just on the track but off the track as mm. well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him back at. I'm looking Bar forward again. to see it. Both, 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 him, both him and, and Jason Doyle as well. Yeah. You know, so. um, that, well, Emil Saifutinoff, when he first, his very first match in this country, riding for Coventry, yeah. was against Birmingham at the Perry Bar yeah, circuit. The crowd was enormous, wasn't, wasn't it? Wasn't it just? And, yeah. and, and he didn't disappoint. He was brilliant. Yeah. And he came on the mic afterwards and said, if all the tracks in Britain are like this, it's going to be great. Yeah, he did. He, uh, he, I know. He, I know. I think he did mm. stay at Birmingham, was his favourite track mm. in this country, didn't he? So yeah. he's, he's going to be looking forward to coming back to. To Perry Bar again, um, but yeah, I, I personally I've made it for the favourites to win the to win it this season. But, uh, yeah, I have as well. I, yeah. I, um, but as I say, uh, I think the key man is um, is Adam Ellis. Danny King's not had a great start, but he didn't, no, he have, he didn't have a great start last season. though, did mm. he? But got better as the as the season went on. So Ben says Brum will be competitive this year, and obviously being top flight means that you've got more options to make changes if required. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, I certainly I think, think that uh, Nigel Tolly would be very pleased with the two crowds that he's had this season. Yes, they've, they've certainly been a yeah. vast improvement on on what was coming through the gates in twenty twenty three. Dylan's, but oh, we'll talk about the super heat as well. By the way, you, didn't they not, they're not nice when you lose them, are they? So. I, I, I no. <laughs> Uh, felt for Malik in super heat last week, actually, as Jack Holder was out of shape and caused him to go down. He just went a second or two delayed. That is absolutely yeah. spot on. That's absolutely spot on. But, I mean, if he'd come off straight away, he'd have probably been back in. I, th- I thought it should have been an all four back, but I don't think it would have changed anything. It was anything. a bit of an anticlimax in the end, wasn't yeah. it, really? I don't uh, think it would have changed anything, though. Yeah. <clears throat> Overall, he's not been too bad this season, bearing la- barring last night, considering he's riding out of position. And we have to, <coughs> excuse me, we have to remember that he's riding out of position. Mm, that's right. A little bit, but he would still be in heat fifteen. He, yeah. You know, you would think, expect him to be in heat thirteen, heat fifteen. Um. So yeah. So I mean, I think we're, we've actually made a prediction, both of us there, that we yeah. think they switch to the. They, they they would be my tip, standout team. Yeah. Okay. OK, let's move on to Kingsland then. So Kingsland have got Tobias Muselek, Vadim Tarasenko, Niels Christian Everson, Benjamin Basso, Michael Palm Toft, Patrick Waldolo and Anders Rowe. OK, I think that's a vulnerable team. I think it's got a lot of potential, that team. I think there's going to be, you know, there's a lot of exciting riders in that league. You've got, mm. I mean, Tobias Muselek, I think, I know a lot of Birmingham fans were, were hoping that he might mm. have Perry Bar because he's such a... He's such a good rider to watch. He needs to step up now to show that he's a an out and out number one. Tarrant Senko was a huge revelation last season when he came he home was, and raced yeah. for Peterborough, and he's going to be challenging Muslik for the the number one spot. I think the key man really for them is going to be Niels Everson. You know, he's been a terrific number one for the club in the past. He's not quite the the rider that he was, but I think no, that experience not. in the middle order is uh, is going to be good. And I think the big thing for them is going to be having Rob Lyon back as the team manager for a second spell. Um, he was there obviously when they had a successful spell in the in the old Premier League, mm-hmm. and of course he's I remember yeah, it well. And of course won the won the league with Peterborough a few years ago, didn't they? Yeah, so yeah. I, have, I, I was looking at this. I didn't realise the last time they got to the playoffs was 2018. I mean they had a I mean they had a, a Birmingham star season last year, didn't they? They were yeah, they were the Birmingham of the Premier League. Yeah, <laughs> they, they had about they had about 40 riders ride right for them in the end, didn't they? So, um, but I, I think they've got an I think they've got a lot of potential. Okay. That team. I think it could be a really exciting team to watch. And it's going to, I think it's going to be an interesting match on Thursday. Yeah, that's going to be King, a tough Kings match for Birmingham. Birmingham. It's going to be a tough match. Mm. But we've got riders that can possibly ride King's yeah. Lynn well. It's a sort of Polish type yeah. track as well, isn't it? So. That's right, yeah. It's not. King's Lynn have had. Um, been been disappointment for me because Kings Lynn over in the past has been a, a terrific racetrack. He seems to have mm. lost it a little bit in recent seasons, but hopefully they can make some improvements there because. You know, there's no doubt that Kings Lynn, when it's when it's on song, is is one of the it's best tracks track, in the country. Yeah. It's a brilliant race track. It's, I, I've never been there. You know, I'd love to. It's one of the tracks that is on my list to to go to at some point in the future. So mm. it's just a blooming so, long way. That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> I actually would like to talk about the super because it's been it's come up again about super heats. Only, I mean, only in speedway can can you lose a match forty five all. 
Which is what we did against well, it, well, Sheffield. Well, didn't, didn't lose the match effectively because it was still a draw. It was, it was just, it was just the, the extra point. So, which, but that's essentially you know, how it feels. Yeah. But it's also, it needs to, if you're going to have a super heat, it needs to be tweaked somewhere because at the moment it just favours the, the teams with that, that have got the big number one and number five. That's, you know, which is obviously where she, So if you build your team to be solid all the way through, it puts you at a disadvantage. Mm, Not sure so, that's yeah. right. But I don't know how you would change it, but I think it, I didn't like it. Don't like it. I was wrong with the 45 all draw. It's, it's great when you win them. Not, mm. You know, we obviously we had a few of them last season. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we lost a few of them, and I didn't like. And then we won a couple of them. And I thought, oh, this is good. <laughs> but, uh, okay. It gives you. It, it, I suppose it gives you another race. It gives you another race on the night as well. So, and some some of the super heats we saw last season were, have been were brilliant. I mean, obviously I saw the one at Bellevue. Even though we we lost it in the end, it was. Mm. I think every single rider was in first place, second place, third place, and fourth place during I'll that say, race. I it was, mean, it's it it, incredible. It's, it's a really uh, yeah. good. YouTube video that yeah. one it's, yeah. it's really good uh, I'm, I'm losing uh, comments yeah, yeah, here yeah. sorry they're going too fast I think. Yeah, they, so, yeah. slow, slow down busy. slow down okay. Kingsling's strongest lineup for many years plenty of potential to grow averages throughout the side Duncan Pemberton this is a, a good question actually what do you guys think about Oxford running three teams this season do the Oxford promotion really expect their fan base to consistently turn out spending money to watch all the teams? I think it's a massive financial risk. Well, I'm presuming that they've got to do that to get the to get the number of meetings in, Ricard, because Roddy just in the top league won't get the number, won't get enough meetings in, and Roddy, possibly Roddy in the second tier won't mm. as well. Are there any other clubs doing that? No, no they're, they're the only they're ones. The only, one, they're the only, only ones that, in all three. The only ones that have oh, ever okay. done that, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay. I, was, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them doesn't finish their meetings, and you you would think, unfortunately, it probably would be the national league team. Mm. Finish all their meetings. Unfortunately, but they've got to be mm. lucky with the weather, which unfortunately um, we haven't been in the opening few weeks. So we're talking about the uh, super heat again here. Don't see why a draw can't just be given. No point for normal meetings. Only needed for aggregate scores. Um, uh, and also, I mean, I was looking at it from a Birmingham point of view, but you should look at it from the away side's point of view. Mm-hmm. You get a draw, and then you're at somebody's own track to get the. The super heat, and you're you're possibly at a disadvantage there. Mm. And to get a draw and then come away with just the one point, and while the other team gets the two points, that's a bit of a kick in the nuts as well. It is a little bit, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I don't like don't don't like it. Dave David Albrighton, we we yeah we we might talk about this. Good would be good to see Brummies move with Blues into the Super Stadium. We'll have to see what happens. Birmingham Council. Selling everything off. It's got, not, never going to happen. I'm sorry. Why do you say that? Because as just, I understand I it, they, it's not going to happen. as I understand it, they want to make it into a multi sports uh, stadium, uh, it's sports village, isn't not, it? Yeah. not there, not there. It's um, the, the, the the ground that they're in at the moment. Mm. There are there will be, from what I've heard, mm. that's going to be a sports complex, but. It's not going to be big enough for a because the the site at the Wales is massive, massive. Huge. absolutely I've, I've, massive. I've seen the new ground superimposed mm. on on onto the site. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, it's huge, it's huge. So there's but, room there. There's yeah, potential well, they're, well, they're, what it is they're thinking of the future. So, I mean, their, their plans are to bring NFL matches right to to there, and they're going to so they're going to need a big stadium. Mm-hmm. But I'll find out more on uh, Tuesday next week. Okay. Rich Thomas says, can't believe Oxford aren't being helped by the BSBI to run three teams. Yeah. Who knows? To be frank, in some countries, uh, football matches end as a draw. It goes to penalties, yeah. so you can lose a league football match nil-nil. It's a very Americanised thing. It is, yeah. As is everything these days. Just don't like it. First match on Eurosport is Birmingham versus Bellevue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice to be able to show off our new overalls to the world. <laughs> I have to say, I, th- I think the, t- the team suits of Birmingham got this season are very impressive. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're really, really they good. They are nice. You know, I do like them. Yep. Pete's referring to the uh, overalls that we wear on the track, though. We've all got white? nice new red overalls. Red? You know, oh, I don't, no. Nobody said. They all don't look new, do I, I, I remember the old butcher's one. You look quite smart in us. <laughs> years ago. Uh, Duncan Pemberton thought Brum Council was bankrupt. Well, there's bankrupt oh. and then there's council bankrupt, and yeah, it's, di- it's yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. It's different. 
Right, well, let's move on to uh, Leicester. Yep, Leicester, yeah. Uh, so we've got uh, Max Frick. We need uh, to think about the, yep. sport, the, the prediction league yep, soon as well, okay. don't we? Max yep. Frick, Ryan Douglas, Sam Masters, Luke Becker, Richard Lawson, Drew Kemp and Joe Thompson. They lost the other night, didn't they? Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. That, I thought mm. they might have enough to beat tip switch. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they were... I think they were tipped as dark horses to do well last season. And mm. they, they did look like they were going to. They looked like they were shoeings for the playoffs, didn't they? And then obviously we have this, this situation with Nick Morris. Yeah. They eventually dropped out. Of course, they had that that defeat at Peter where they only needed thirty four points at Peter and they just capitulated in that meeting. Um, obviously now Paul Cairns has taken over running of Leicester. Um, possibly, I, I think their their Achilles heel might be at reserve. Them, um, they might be a little bit suspect at the bottom end, especially away from home. Mm. But I certainly think they'll be a, they'll definitely be a playoff contender. You would normally say have Leicester as a shoe in to get all the home matches, mm-hmm. uh, because you know it, 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 home track advantage is yeah. quite quite strong at Leicester. And obviously, but, having, having, having the three the three ex Wolves boys there mm. in Masters, Becker, and. Um, Douglas, I mean, I think... Ryan and Becker's Douglas, had a good start yeah, to the Ryan, season. Well, I mean, Ryan Douglas, I think, was always going to go back to Leicester. Mm. Now, obviously, he's, he's, got, you know, he's been with them before, of course. Um, he's got to improve his... I mean, he's, his form at Monmouth was always, could always be a little bit suspect, but his away form was excellent for us. Mm. Uh, if he's He needs to be better at home if they're going to push on. But I think he probably will because it's a track that, that suits him. Um, yeah. So, I think the jury's still out on the, Le- on the Leicester... Yeah, I think I, I think they'll be top four. Okay, I do think they'll be top four. Okay, I am not going to make any predictions like that. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Um, massive shout out to Chris at OK T-shirt too for working wonders on the black brum polos and jackets, along with the embroidery of the funky red overalls. Great to make bonds <laughs> with local business. There you go. Okay. Okay. There's been a bit of that going on at Birmingham this year. Yep. It's uh, yeah, pretty good. And talking of sponsorship. Uh, yes, we do have a sponsor. We've got a sponsor. Susie, yes. uh, uh, so-called Studios in Acock Screen in Birmingham. Uh, it's a great venue. Um, recording studios, uh, and they have bands on and so forth. And uh, it's, it's a great little music venue. But very, uh, you know, if anybody wants to go down there and have a chat and you fancy doing a bit of recording or whatever, or even just watch a band, there's loads of stuff on. Just uh, go to, I think it was socalledstudios.co.uk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're on Facebook as well. Give them a like. Give them a like. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, regarding the prediction league, can that Corbett geezer be put off 15 <laughs> metres at the start of it, please? <laughs> he, pretty, he pretty much was last year, didn't yeah, he? He, he still did, won he, it, so. He sort of, yeah. So, okay. let's move on to uh, Oxford. So, you've got Magic Yanofsky, Rowan Tungate, Nikolai Clint, Chris Harris, Charles Wright, Lewis Kerr and Ashton Boven. I think that people have been unkind about this Oxford team, saying that they're going to just finish just above Birmingham. <laughs> Um, I think they'll be spoilers. Mm. Um, Actually, I, I, Bowen was I, I was slightly impressed by him yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the first time I saw him was in the youth championship mm. meeting at Perry Bar last season, and I was impressed with him in in that one. But really, he shouldn't have been getting any points last night at all. That was no. a, that was a massive uh, massive blow. I think you know, mm. Leon losing to getting beaten by him. Although he's, I think he will be a very very good rider mm. yeah, in time. He's obviously only very young. Um, I think having Lewis, I think their trump card is going to be probably having strong reserve most of the season. I mean, Lewis Kerr probably didn't ride that well no. last night there, but I think certainly he'll be very good as the season goes on. Bomber's bomber, you know what you're going to get with him, don't mm. you? Um, Charles Rice had a very good season last year for Bellevue. Of course, it was ended by by that bad crash in yes. um, Holland. He always goes well at Oxford as well. I think he, I think he won the um, championship best player. Always there. goes well at Birmingham as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Rowan Tungate, I thought, impressed me last night. He I, I very, was going to say news. that, yeah. He was the surprise one, because mm. I, I thought, we haven't seen him, we, uh, he hasn't ridden over here since 2019, and mm. I thought, mm, is he still going to be able to do it? But he certainly looked very... very yeah, I was I was impressed with, with Tungate. Uh, so. Yeah, OK. OK, so... Sheffield are next. Sheffield. So you've got Jack Holder, Ty Woofington, Chris Holder, Josh Pickering, Carl Harreth, Dan Jilks, and Jason Edwards. Possibly a little bit long reserve. I'll tell you what I think their key man's going to be, Chris Holder. Okay. Because I think there's a lot of emphasis on on Chris Holder, from them signing him on the basis of the Chris Holder of 10 years Mm. ago. He's not that rider now. Um, I thought he was disappointing at Perry Bar Mm -hmm. the other week. Obviously, he won one heat when he got out the start. Um, 
I, I think away from home he might be have a couple of meetings where he does he's not quite on it. I think he'll be all right at, at Olsen. Um, mm-hmm. But I think he'll he'll be a he'll be a key man. I think and I think at reserve as well. Mm. Dan Jilks obviously showed plenty of promise last year, um, and Jason Edwards has made steady progress as well. But it's possible. but compared to the some of the other yeah. reserve yeah, pairings, they, they, they're certainly. I mean, you look you compare them to the the Birmingham reserves, mm. for example. Birmingham are a reserve for, for me are, are a lot stronger a reserve than mm-hmm. than Sheffield are. That might be their that might be their Achilles heel. They are the bookies' favourites, I think, and. You know, obviously, with the with the Holder brothers and Ty at the top end, you know, and, and Josh Bickering. Well, I mean, you know, what you're going to get with him, don't you? It's, mm-hmm. He's all action, as well. So they're going to be in there. You you you'd be a fool to write to. It's a, really a, a, a tight mm. league. We're going to see some strange results this yeah. year, I think. Well, I'll give you my top four. I know you're um, you're going to sit on the fence. Yes, but I'm going to go <laughs> for Ipswich to win it. Sheffield to make them in the final and be runners up Leicester third Kingsley fourth interesting Kingsley will just edge out Oxford and um, Bellevue so you're putting Birmingham at the bottom then yeah, yeah. I am putting Birmingham at, at the bottom as it stands at the moment yeah, absolutely yeah, okay. of course I think Leicester have got more more steel in the middle of their team with the obviously our three X riders as well so that'll, mm-hmm. that'll help them um, and I think to say Kingsley I think have got a lot of it's a massive season for Kingsley they've had three pretty awful seasons mm. they? they've got to perform this year and they've got to keep a stable team as well I mean they've got through far too many riders over the last few mm. seasons so if they can have that solidity and a lot more and some exciting racing I think that'll be good for them but that's my that's my top four but I've gone for Ipswich to win it my, my hope for just talking on a personal note now for Birmingham is that if things don't go well that they make changes a lot quicker than they did last year yeah they just waited too long didn't mm. they and yeah absolutely but anyway that's we before we go on to the prediction league I, I, we should mention something actually um, we lost Graham Drury over the yeah over the winter um, was key one of the key players in bringing Speedway back to Birmingham uh, you always knew what you got when you with the Graham Drury side, mm-hmm. you know he knew, he knew how to build a speedway team, uh, and it's just from a personal point of view, it's really sad. Yeah, um, it was an, oh, that was a nice thing they did last week, really playing his playing yes his, his voice yeah. over the um, during the minute silence. The, uh, was, uh, the, uh, the 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 interview that we recorded. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we was like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. it was nice. It was good. Still available on YouTube if anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, yeah, rest in peace, yeah. Graham. It was. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a long, you know, long, long life in speed. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. End of the day, so absolutely it was. right. Um, we've got a few predictions coming up here: Kingsley, Ipswich, Sheffield, Oxford. Said Simon Corbett. In that order. In that order, I presume. Ipswich, Oxford, Sheffield, Lynn. Says Rich Thomas. So right, sh- mm-hmm. talking of predictions, shall we start the the prediction league? Okay, so week number one. Let's go for the oh, first one. Okay. Um, Apologies, we haven't really emphasised on the other two leagues, haven't we? But there's mm-hmm. been more on the more going on in the championship, so we will get on to the other three leagues in in future shows. We absolutely. Will. So first up, BSN series Oxford against Poole. Oxford versus Poole. Don't start with me. Uh, we'll start with Matt. <laughs> Poole by ten. Uh, okay, Poole by six. Yeah, I'm going to say Poole by ten as well. Okay, next up, Kings Lynn against Birmingham on Thursday. An old rivalry. Uh, yeah. 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 A bit of a grudge between for, the two of them for many years, wasn't it? It was the, the yeah, uh, Graham Drury and, <laughs> yeah, we won't go into that. Uh, okay, it's up to you. Uh, sorry, Ki- what? Kings Lynn versus Birmingham. Oh, right, Thursday. okay. I'll, 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 with the I'll go Brummies pit- boy. Four. Okay. There you go. How's that then? Okay. Do you know what? I'm going to go for a super heat. Because <laughs> <laughs> I see the confidence Just, is still there. Uh, the stupidity. <laughs> so I'm going for yes. a draw. That's always been there. I'll go Kings Lynn by six. Okie dokie. I'll probably take that, to be fair. Yeah. 
Okay, second leg of the cup for, of the quarterfinal of the Knockout Cup. Birmingham already in the semi final, by the way. Yay! So, <laughs> <laughs> that's the downside of being in a league. The only got to, yeah. 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 So Ipswich against Leicester. It's on Thursday. Oh gosh, uh, it's up to me. Isn't it? I'm going to yeah. say Ipswich by pick a number twelve. Yeah, I'll go for Ipswich by ten. I'll go for Ipswich by. Eight. Okay. In the other quarter final, second leg of that one, Sheffield against Bellevue. That's up to you. That's going to be interesting. Sheffield by 14. Mm-hmm. Who's up to you? Sorry, mate. Up to you. Sorry, who, who is it against? Sorry. Sheffield versus Bellevue. Keep well, I'll up. Go, I'll go uh, <laughs> Bellevue by six. Uh, I'm going to say, really? Yeah. Okay. Are you listening to anything that we've said? No. I'm multitasking, <laughs> so I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. say uh, Sheffield by eight. Okay. Okay. There's always a shock in there. Yeah, okay. Mm. In right then on Friday in the BSN series, Scunthorpe against Redcar. Okay, this is up to you, um, no, Chris. I've just been. No, that was Matt. Matt did that one. This is yours now. Okay, so uh, yeah. what, what, who was it? <laughs> oh, keep up for goodness sake. Scunthorpe sake. against Red Scunthorpe Car. versus Scun- Red Car. Oh, Scun- Can't get the help, oh, yeah. can you? I'll go Scunthorpe by ten. Yeah, I'm going to go Scunthorpe by. Oh, eight. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. Oh, you ready, chance? Scunthorpe by eight as well. Now <laughs> you've said that. I'll still stick with Scunthorpe by. Eight. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, also on Friday, Edinburgh against Glasgow in the first Scottish derby. Edinburgh versus Glasgow, wow. This would be down to me, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's going to be close, I think. I'm going to say Edinburgh by six. That's not close, is it? That's it's only one, Draw is three, single point. Three, four twos, yeah. Okay. Uh, Glasgow by eight. Oh, I'll go... Uh, which Scottish team you want to annoy the most? Edinburgh <laughs> by six. Okay. Okay. Also in the BSN series on Saturday, Workington against Scunthorpe. It's up to you, Matt. Scunthorpe by four. I'll go Scunthorpe by ten. Do we think Workington have uh, overstretched themselves this year? <laughs> I'll say Scunthorpe by four. I was surprised they moved up, to be honest. Mm. Although, really, you can say in that, I think they're in the National League now, with obviously with the loss of, of Mills and all as mm. well in Kent. I mean, that league's just completely all yes. the way now, isn't it, unfortunately? Yeah, well, at least it's going. We wasn't sure it was going to go for a while. We should probably talk about that on a future site. Yep. Okay, okay, next up is Berwick against Glasgow, also in the um, BSN. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. It's up to you, Chris. I'll go Glasgow. I'll say Glasgow by six. I'll say Berwick by four. Interesting. Yeah, okay. On Sunday in the beer, in the uh, National League, Leicester against Edinburgh. In the National League. Yeah. Uh, it is me. I'm going to say Leicester by 10. Leicester by 16. Leicester by 12. Okay. And last up on Monday in the Premiership, Bellevue against Leicester. That'll be an interesting one. Mm. It's up to you, Matt. Bellevue by 6. Bellevue by 12. I'll go Bellevue by 8. Yeah, I, I do agree with you actually on, on Workington, although I mm. think, as I've said, possibly the, uh, the, the, nas- the fall in the National League has really contributed to them uh, doing that, to them uh, moving up. Uh, are we done? We are, yeah. We, we are done. done. Uh, before, we, before we do go, can we just apologise for the staggered start to our uh, speed season? Rate yeah. Season, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been very well for the last few weeks uh, due to recurrence of an old problem from 2017. Uh, but I'm getting back on track. But it looks like the next couple of weeks are going to be a bit <laughs> hit. Yes, bit, I bit. mean, as it stands at the moment, there, there won't be a show next week, but there may be. Okay. And but if it's not, there won't be one, there the, week be one the week after. Because yeah. you're, you're away. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So. But we, will, we will get back on track uh, yeah. eventually. Yeah, so, yeah, it's great to be back. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think it's been a, a, a full speedway. I think we should talk about that, actually, that what the, 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 just to finish on, on a high note, the difference that Phil Morris has made this year. Yeah, I think so. Um for for a whole week, probably a bit longer, every day you woke up and turned on the BSPA 
website and oh we're being sponsored by such and such mm-hmm. next day oh we're being sponsored by such and such that's really refreshing mm-hmm. with has that ever happened before not for quite a few years mm-hmm. I, I found that 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 was like oh Okay. Actually, I just That's remembered it. as well, we're talking about Workington. We should applaud them, of course, because they've obviously got uh, Selena Leibman in there. In their yes, so yes, absolutely. Uh, we, and, and has been scoring points yeah, as well. Yeah, has been scoring points. Obviously, that's a, that's a huge, huge statement for mm. Speed, obviously, with a, a, a female rider in a, in a team for in the first team. time. So. Yeah, absolutely. How, how many female riders are there at the moment? Don't know, but in the team, there's one. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but she's she's but she's uh, she's certainly done pretty well. I mean, I, I, obviously she rode in the Peter Craven meeting. She mm-hmm. was maybe a bit out of the depth in that one, but um, but certainly certainly the points that she's got, the, the meetings that she's run so far, she's done well in. So we wish her well. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a huge statement from British Speedway to that is, that room, um, yeah. and perhaps there should be more in the media about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. there should have been, to be honest. Mm. And perhaps if uh, Phil Morris had been in charge of championship as well as premiership, there would have been. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's something. That's yeah. maybe that's the next step. Yeah, as I say, apologies, we haven't really touched on the championship or the national league, but I'm sure we will do in, in future shows. Absolutely. So. I mean, they haven't. They've only really just started to get yeah, going, right, haven't yeah, they? So. Um, Can I just quickly backtrack. So, why isn't um, Phil Morris in charge of premiership and championship? Why because he hasn't been asked to be in charge of the so championship. So, who's in charge of, charge of the championship? The teams that are in, that are oh, in the Premiership, yeah. <laughs> they're in that are in the Championship. Sorry, yep. oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how it's always been, isn't it? You know, you, yeah. and which is why I said at the beginning, it now it feels like that decisions are being made for the interests of Speedway rather than the interests of separate clubs. Because that was whether that's true or not, yeah. you're leaving yourself open to that accusation. That's right. You know, um, so now. That's that. That's the big breath of fresh air. The the media day was was um, a really good idea, and and hopefully it'll be something that you, they will build on. Whereas before they'd have gone, uh, it didn't really work the way we wanted it to, so we won't do it again. Yeah. Hopefully they will learn to put something on Ty Waffington's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. So. Um, you know, but they'll learn from it and take it and expand it and make it better. Um, some of the the decisions that 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 have been been made, I think, are really really positive, and it feels positive. You look at the British the BSPA website now; it's much more on the ball with what's yeah, go, yeah, with what's happening. Um, that's right. I mean, you can do all sorts on there now. You can you can download the official score charts as well from yeah. meetings and things like that. that. You can sense. book training days, you know, for brother clubs. Um, yeah, so it's 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 all it all seems to be sort of slowly starting to you can you can see his influence, can't you? Yeah, um, and you can see the influence of his being in charge of the GPs as well. You know, so that he's brought some of that over to Pitt Clark says Phil Morris should be put in charge of all the leagues. I think he's got enough on his plate at the moment with the top I league. So I think he has, yeah. But, uh, um, maybe when he's sorted, maybe when he's happy with the uh, with how the premiership's run, he will look at some. But maybe it's just a case of filtering down what's happening in the top league into yeah. the, in, you know. Absolutely, but, yeah. Uh, we we will say. Oh, and that is. That's someone saying. Someone saying. You need to um, go. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's been great. Uh, maybe see you next week. Rich Thomas says, what did Waffy do? Have a look on YouTube and you'll find out. Um, yeah, we will hopefully see you soon and uh, all the best for you and your team. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night.